Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Welcome on the webinar, which is about your next move after the big four. You better not be attending this webinar while your HR is around. Uh, if you are part of the audit firms, uh, you're either working from home or at your client's place or you're driving back home right now. These are the safest moments to be attending this webinar, I guess. I don't think any auditor will be leaving their uh, their office anytime <laughs> soon. So, um, uh, I mean, for those who have not been in our classes, uh, let me give a quick introduction about Kaplan and myself. Uh, Kaplan originally has been a, a publisher. We publish a lot of material. Even if you've not studied your qualifications with Kaplan, you would have gone through the text material of Kaplan at some point uh, in the past. Um, we also now have a training institute in the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and we cater to both the B2B and the B2C market. So we offer trainings for both types of our clients, the individuals as well as the corporates to bridge the training gaps and needs. About myself, I'm mainly uh, associated with the professional qualifications. And uh, I get a lot of opportunities to interact with candidates. Um, most of the learners come from an audit background or they want to work in the audit. So when you're not in the audit field, you want to be in the audit field. And when you are in the audit field, you want to get out of the audit field. That's what I have in my eight years of training experience, 14 years of work experience, interaction with thousands and thousands of candidates. What I've learned is nobody's happy, Bilal. True. So uh, we're going to start with understanding from you because you worked in two of the big fours. You worked in Deloitte, you worked in PwC. Let me tell the audience, you're not currently working with any one of them, but you have worked in the past. Was it so bad, Bilal? Uh, in terms of, I think what, what's the worst thing about it is the pressure that uh, that uh, um, the, the staff feels there. The level of, of stress is really uh over the roof it's uh and also it's not uh, it's not like a seasonal thing where it's two months a year or three months a year well there is something called busy season which which varies from one person to another i've uh i've had it through my three years and a half and and the big fours i've had it for three months and then i've had it for eight months and then i've had it for full year so in the first year it's three months and then when you progress it becomes more and then when you become a senior it's all year long there's nothing cold i think there's only one uh, during the full year uh only one or two months where you consider it as uh where people at least when you leave there's a bit of sun left outside otherwise you you work from morning till late night um i think even for for a prolonged hours and that i'm not speaking only uh, about my experience i think any auditor who's worked in any of the big four and even big 10 will share this we miss the sun we miss seeing the sun when we leave. Honestly, I've, I've one day I remember that I left the office uh, early, not because I wanted to, because the client was moving offices, so I had to to leave. And it was a Friday. Uh, I, I could. It's, it's not something that you fully comprehend. Like I left, I felt that I've done something wrong, and no, I have to go back to work. And uh, there's something called Stockholm syndrome, and you've mentioned that earlier. At the point of time, you you enjoy you enjoy being. Let me call it captive. You enjoy being captivated by, uh, by the work there. It's it's uh, it's honestly a very enriching experience for anyone who who joined any big four. They can't. They might hate it. They might. Some might love it. But for sure, that's something that sculpts your future, uh, paves the way to, to 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 a better future. Indeed, the exposure you get from um, from working at a big four, even with stress management. Honestly, I. Even now, I like I've left audit two years back, and I can still say, no matter what, what, no matter what, how stressful my day becomes, it's a piece of cake compared to what I used to have. You become immune to stress. Of course, it gets you sometimes, but for the most part, you become stronger. Yeah. So yeah. Can you just move the slides? I'm sure the audience would be interested in you know reading about uh, where you've worked in the past and. Um, not about me. I mean, I don't think they're interested in me right now. Uh, the next one, the next, the next slide, sure. which has some information on you. So it's it's interesting what you've just said there that we enjoy being captives and 
um, we all experience uh, this in our fields, irrespective of what industry you are in. Uh, at times when, uh, you know, I can call a day off earlier, I feel guilty at times that why am I going home so early? Uh, because you get so used to working late hours, uh, you get used to, you know, tiring yourself off only, you you know, only till the time you reach that stage where you're like enough, I've, I've done, I'm done for the day. That's when you feel more accomplished that, you know, I've, I've, I've done something today. It's been a, it's been a good day for me work wise, productivity wise, but well, working more hours is, is one thing and being productive is, is another. True. Uh, I know because of the COVID and post COVID, we've all changed in different ways. There's no consistency or there's no one right way to work anymore. Uh, some people are more comfortable working from home. Some are not. Uh, some enjoy remote working and some don't. So there is difference in opinion. And I think the dif it's not about what is right and what is wrong. It's more about what works best for you, the company and your client. Um, but I mean, when I look at my circle, when I look at the candidates, I look at my friends, it's really rare to find that people go beyond seven, eight years in mm. audit, you know, unlike other industries where we do see people working, you know, for 10 years, there are quite of examples like this. Yes. So there is True. a burnout. Perhaps there is a stage where you feel that it's time to move. It's time to fly. It's time to change the nest. But, if I have to ask you this to generalize it, is there, it's like we keep asking these questions. Is there a right time to start to do a qualification? Is there a right time to settle down in life? So is there also a right time to leave the big four and move towards the industry? Uh, I, I honestly, I'll, uh, I'll honestly tell you what worked for me. And that's something that I was, um, uh, let me tell you, I, I've had multiple offers when I was in Big Four. All of them were of prestigious firms, international names, um, like uh, big names that people, I think even in just throwing some of the names here, everyone would know them. Uh, but it's not about the position that you're going to go to. Um, and this and this and let me let me take one step back and walk through I walk our audience through my my uh, my uh, humble career uh, that that's currently just marked five years. Um, I kicked I kickstarted my career with Deloitte. This was in September uh, 2018. I was still in university through my last semester, um, and during then I got my ACCA in September 2021. If you see my joining date and my ACCA certificate, uh, it's literally three years. I've only had one year and a half of studying. This is when I my from my first. Uh, exam till my last exam. Uh, funny is that my uh, my first exam was with you and my last exam was with you. I've had my PM with you and I've had my SBL with you. So, um, and honestly, this is when I felt that um, it's, uh, it's the right time for me to move. Being in three years, and uh, this is where I'll just say, that's why if you see, if you see how I, uh, I, I, um, I managed the slide is that I, I, I mentioned the pet stop in PwC because I, I ideally I should have went to the industry uh, once I got my ACCA certificate. Uh, from one person to another, experience would differ. Uh, in Deloitte, and uh, I think even speak to any of the people who are who works in Big Four, Deloitte, at least from the people I know and from the experience I've had, Deloitte is the most tense in terms of responsibility from a very young age. Um, since year one, and I've, I've, I have friends from all other Big Ten as well. From the, the expectation in Deloitte is from your second year, you're ready to become a senior. And that's how you're built. Uh, so once I hit my three years, I've had more than 50 clients, uh, of which they are from different industries. Um, the time is very crunched in Deloitte that you have to complete an audit in one week time, two weeks time. Uh, and and especially when you work with with the with with different managers, you'll have different experiences. My uh, the experience I've had and and what I'll be and I'm not very I, I'm an advocate of what I believe in uh, in terms of when is the right time to leave uh, Big Four, um, and this is what I'll I'll, I'll highlight. Um, once you become a senior with four or five years of experience, for others it might be faster, but once you do let's say for consolidation, once you 
uh, once you audit a lot of clients in different industries, uh, once you once you have audited almost all the financial statement lines from balance sheet to income statement, then do the cash flow and then audit financial statements. Honestly, the, the your tenure from third year to from your senior to manager becomes more on managing rather than just learning new things. Um, and and what I have seen from the people who are around me that once you leave as a senior, you have this freedom of going and you won't have the you won't have a very high ego for you to become a manager immediately. You'll be you'll still be humble. Uh, and you'll find this with big four people, and specifically due to the hard work they've put, the long hours, sleepless nights, pressure, burnout, early burnout in their career. They'll they'll have a very high expectation to what they exit to once they go to industry. And I've had it. I've had this expectation. I'm I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Once I was a senior, I was like, no, I'm not going to go as a senior somewhere else. I'm coming from a big four. I have an ACCA certificate. My I believe my fair value in the market. I, I, I see my fair value as higher than what the market sees it. Uh, once you leave as a senior, and that's what I'm an advocate of, the, I'm advocate of that opinion, is that once you leave as a senior, you'll go somewhere else and go progress in another function. For example, I moved from audit, which is that works on compliance, financial reporting, and accounting, to finance. Uh, somewhere where I haven't, I haven't done anything. Every day, day in, day out, I used to learn something new. In big four, I think after my three years mark this is literally when i went to pwc i was just a matter of managing people and it's a very important skill but i believe if i and humbly i'm this is this is my two cents on the dollar here if i stayed for the next two years in pwc i would have my learning progress and my learning curve wouldn't be as steep as when i left somewhere else and learned um plus another thing and that's like a, a reality check and i've done a lot of interviews when i was in deloitte and pwc once you go and you want to negotiate uh, a better pay, a better package, or even a designation, the first thing because the first thing that a recruiter or a manager would come and tell you, first thing, a lot of companies will try to lowball you. They know that you're stressed and burned out. Second thing, they'll come and tell you, you don't have industry experience. You're not very knowledgeable with ERPs. Uh, you're very good in reporting and IFRSs. But operationally, commercially, there's a gap. You understand it. But come, let me put you in front of a laptop. I'll tell you steer. You won't be able to steer uh, the boat. Hence, I believe I, when I left as a senior, I joined as a senior in another company, but in a field where um, a, lo a lot of progress has ha I, I progressed from being a senior to a manager. That's in two years' time. I do believe if I stayed in, 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 in the big fours, it would be very challenging for me to become a manager in the two years where I made it outside. Not because I'm not... I'm, I, I'm not um, uh, I don't have the potential to be a, become a manager, but just because there are other considerations there. For example, um, in all big fours, you have like eight people will only be, uh, like the whole office, seniors, will be competing to become a manager. Then there are the requirements. You'll have to, for example, you'll have to continue for two periods as a senior or three periods as a senior. Then you'll have to go through, what if I've done everything perfectly, but another senior has a more, for example, if all my clients are local, while uh, some candidate is working on Apple, Microsoft, and another company, he will have preference because his clients are bigger. Such things in the industry, is you, you, you don't have this challenge. Your your performance, your true performance, will, will shape you. So I took the bet is that if I left somewhere else, um, I'll be able to progress more in my career, learn more, uh, and become, let's say, Peer to yeah, peer to peer, where my peers are and where am I right now? I got lucky in a few things. I worked hard. Uh, I'm sure that they did as well. But not all my peers that we all joined since I joined Deloitte or PwC got the same title. It's not a direct comparison, but that's how I know, or at least my formula or my theory actually worked. Or that's how I see it working or paying off. Go somewhere else, get another experience, open a new horizon for you. And then you're going to learn more. Of course, and Big Four, it gives you the prestige, gives you the client. Maybe maybe other, and I know peers as well, who were in Big Four, went to more prestigious firms or went to more international firms, better pay as well, but with different experiences. Now, whenever, even honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with this. Even right now, with five years of my, uh, five years of experience, uh, I've had two, 
two interviews as head of finance. I'd have two interviews as a director of finance. That's literally in five, six years of my life. Why? Because I took the bet of joining a startup by the time. Uh, and I took the challenge of myself. I've challenged myself, went to a role where I, I, uh, I've worked on different things. And this is where I think we're going to go with, with, uh, with going forward with it. And another, uh, another thing which made it a bit easier for me to join Kitopi, and that's my pit stop that I've, um, I'm mentioning in the slide, is that during my time in PwC, I was working with a startup uh, as, a freelance, as a freelance person. And then I, I joined their forces after my, my working hours. That's one of the reasons why I couldn't give, I used to work for PwC for 12, 13 hours. And then after that, or 14 hours, and then once I go home at 7 or 8 p.m., I'll open my laptop and wear my other hat and start working till 1 and 2, 2 a.m. Um, I felt burned out six months, and that's why, if you see him in PwC, I lasted for five months. I couldn't last longer. Uh, I was working literally 16, 17 hours of my day, and I, I saw that. I, I liked the other hat more. I liked the other side of finance. And when I was working with the startup, we were able to secure almost more than 1 million dirhams in funds for a startup. Wearing that hat of financial analysis, planning, budgeting, and it was a similar industry to what Kitopi. When I saw the high, when I saw that there is a there is a there is an opening with Kitopi in Kitopi, I was already equipped with everything that I the knowledge that I had from my from the startup that I used to work with was actually everything that I needed to know to join Kitopi. So, one of the things I would want to highlight for anyone who's interested to go to any field, I was lucky enough to find uh, entrepreneurs who are looking for a finance guy to help them. Uh, with their pre-seed and their investments round. But nevertheless, me knowing a lot about how kitchens and cloud kitchens with the operating model of a kitchen helped me. For other people, this might be with uh, construction. Difficult, a very uh, difficult one. But my other one might be retail. Other might be e-commerce. Let me just change the startup that I helped my friends uh, with. Became from a kitchen or cloud-based uh, business to an e-commerce business. Let's say that the interview and opening was with Amazon, Noon, or any other e-commerce. I would have an edge against any other uh, um, candidate because I'm already three steps in. So for any industry that you're interest, in, interested in, my, my, my piece of advice, even if you don't have an opportunity to, to go to a very detailed level and knowledge, just knowing about it, just being familiar with the... I'll tell you one of the things that made even the interviewers in Kitopi, which are my director right now and my CFO, is that even when I prepared the, 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 the scenario case or the st case study that I've done, I've done it according to their standards. How did I know this? Literally, I went to one of the listed companies or one of the published, PN, uh, published financials in the US, took the same financial, and from my knowledge, and I've presented the case in that, in that um, presentation, the same way that they prepare the financial. This is literally what they were looking for. Hence, I was a perfect match to the to the to the to the vacancy that they've had because of this. So yeah, this is this is uh, this is just a way for me. This was a way for me to 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 exit Big Four. Is that I invested a lot of time in understanding the industry before I joined it. Wow, great! Uh, I think that was very nicely explained, and I'm sure this will. Uh... There will be there's an opportunity for our audience also uh, to learn from it and perhaps have their questions ready. We are still far away from the Q&A session, but I'm sure some of them would have questions for themselves or for other people they know of. Uh, there's something very interesting. In fact, two interesting things I see on your slide. One, I see food, uh, which is 50% yes. discount on food. Yes. So I don't <laughs> know if you are getting a discount today uh, on food. <laughs> Uh, and the second thing I see is um, rings, which means yes. you uh, you met your better half only after you quit the audit industry. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was able to get married after I left the industry. Uh, yeah. So for the I'll, I'll first I'll, uh, I'll anchor first on the fifty percent discount. Uh, like you see, the kickstart pet stop. I didn't want to say market penetration. Um, too early for me to say this. Uh, but one of the things, one of the nice things that they were able to. Um, let's say uh, uh, offer me, which was very easy for me to to hatch on, was the fifty percent discount. Even like even when they sent me the offer, one of the things they were like ESOPs, 
whatever, fast progress, and 50% discount on all of our brands. I am knowing, knowing Kitopi, I'm already a customer for most of their brands. So that's one of, one of the things that, uh, that made me join them. Now, of course, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why. Um, and during my time with Kitopi, and only after I left PwC, I literally had, to, had the time to get married. When you're working for 15, 16 hours, I don't think you have yeah. time to get married or even <laughs> so like... It's not, wise, have... it's not wise to get married then if you're working for 15, 16 hours. Yeah, not at uh, all. Not at all. I so... mean, I, I really like the concept that a business, whatever it sells, it wants its employees to be users of it, to be consumers of it. Because you get direct feedback from your own employees. What yes. is good? What is not good? Uh, and knowing Kitopi, it's 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 quite big now. I, I'm sure when you would have joined, the team wouldn't be that big. What it is right now, it sure. might have grown from the days when you joined it. Um, and usually we see with new businesses and startups, uh, the first few years, they grow really quick before they settle down and they transform themselves into being a, a mature business, perhaps. Yes. Now, uh... Uh, move, moving on from here, uh, Bilal, uh, is we want to know more about your current role. Uh, I know you're in the FP and A role. A lot of people have asked me in my classrooms and a lot of my other colleagues get this question that do we really have to restrict ourselves to the traditional fields? And our answer is obviously no, you don't. ACCA and many other qualifications or degrees, they open avenues uh, and FP and A is one of those and it's an emerging one. Uh, I see a lot of people getting into FP and A roles. Uh, it's more of a management accountant when I look at the job description because you're more into forecasting and and budgeting. So if you can uh, talk us through about what you do, uh, you know, in your current workplace. Sure, sure. Uh, I prepared some, a, a small slide, like I, I prepared this table that explains um, uh, what do I do. Not it doesn't only happen to this. Uh, I'll just speak more about it. But let me walk you through what um, an FPNA cycle looks like. Um, as you mentioned as well, one of the, one of the most emerging or one of the most um, I I started seeing a lot of openings in FPNA recently, and let's say in the past three years. And this is how FPNA become became something that I started actually looking after. Uh, what's nice about it, and maybe maybe I had a different perception about it before I. I I joined the the division, but one of the things that it's nice that's nice about it that not only you're gonna understand you're gonna deal with with accounts or accounting, not only you're gonna deal with finance, but you're really emerged in in, in operation. You're emerged in commercials. You're emerged with as well leadership. Um, consider FPNA as the linking as the as the linking chains between uh, leadership, accounting, and operation. In in different industries, these three speak different languages. Leadership, of course, would speak the whole, everyone's language in the company, but accounting and operation, go to an operations guy and explain to him what is CapEx and OPEX, explain to him IFRS 16. They don't care. They're operation guys. They get, the, the, this is where cash is generated. While accountants, once you go explain the other part, how operation comes and how operation happens, there is a gap there. The role of an FPNA person is to always have this in check, and I'll walk you through the process when we go to the um, the PMOs, the the before last one. So, as a, a FPNA cycle starts in uh, with a, with a long term plan, and there are two more slides that explains what do we what an FPNA person um, day to day, month to month, week to week, and also as well his annual. Uh, cycle. This is the overall and this is the utmost cycle that I'll, I'll be explaining. So every company would have a long-term goal. The long-term goal was, is the ambition, where do we need to be in three or five years? Um, the three to five years plan is where is the is the leadership perception of the market and where, how, how big the company can grow. Once you set a three to five years plan, usually this is um, a top-down, like a, a top-down approach. In, in, in five years, we need to be a unicorn or in five years time, we need to, our sales need to exceed a billion dollars, for example. So you make very small assumptions uh, and very high level assumptions. But then how does this five years plan become your annual plan? The five years plan is like, this is where you decide uh, in order for me to reach there, I have to do one merger. Maybe I have to do an acquisition. In five years, this is where I need to be. This is how much, these are the markets that I wanna penetrate. 
So this gives you an overall what leadership have in mind and and their direction to where directionally they need to head. The long-term plan, once it's set, will literally feed your annual budget. Your annual budget is, a, a, you take the five years and let me just go to the next slide. Once you prepare the long-term plan and you set your five years target, then you take year one and break it down into months. This is where you build everything bottom up. Every single number will have to come from a source. There are, of course, different budgeting techniques, but all of them will have to fall between, will have to speak to year one of the five years plan. I'll go back to the slide before. Once you set your one year plan, this becomes every division will know what exactly is their budget, what is exactly their goal, and where are we heading towards. Uh, the five years plan is useful for leadership. The one year plan is useful for everyone else. If I give you a five years plan, plan and i'll tell you that in five years we'll go from a hundred thousand dollar to a 500 million dollar you'll tell me that this is um, this is this is not something we can achieve but of course the things that you the, the building blocks of that is what you see on on an annual budget but then what's the use of an annual budget if i don't go and check my actuals and let's say I can go and sell the dream to the board or the investors. This is what I'm going to do. But how do they know that I'm actually doing this? What increases accountability and what actually gives a mirror and what what, what will mirror these accomplishments or achievements or even the downfall of this is, an, is the management accounts. Uh, once we set up our budget, everyone would know what's the target for that year, that quarter, for that month. How do we know if, if, if the business has achieved it? Management accounts which you know as accounting, as, as the monthly closing. Once you close your books and you go and check, did I actually hit my revenue that I, 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 I promised that I'm going to get? Was it at that profitable level? Yes or no? Once you do your management accounts, what, and, the monthly, and usually the most stressful one, and out of experience, management account is the most stressful. This is where you know, this is where reality comes to you. This is where you see the achievement of the last one month worth of work being actualized in front of you. This is, things will go bad. And I've, I'm seeing this every in every single business. Uh, otherwise, it's not, it's not it, it, there isn't anything for you to learn. If everything is, uh, is, um, is going well, then everything, you, it doesn't require you to, to step in and do, do a lot of work. So in management accounts, this is where you actually know how did you perform? And did you actually deliver what you promised management to deliver? The management accounts looks at numbers. Management review looks at divisions separately. What went wrong in that division? How can we help? What support do you need? As an FBNA person, I'm part of all the structuring, but if you see, I've, I've mentioned also the time horizon and timing. The long-term plan is a three, six months plan. An annual budget takes one to three to three months. Management, attack, uh, management accounts usually is after five to 10 days after the month closes. And this is when you reflect it on reality. Then 10 to 15 days after you close the month, this is where you go with, with the leadership guidance to every division and help them achieve it. And this is what we call a PMO. This is the weekly and daily flash. This is where my day-to-day -day becomes. This is where I go and speak to operations in order for, to help them optimize and know where the things go wrong. This is where I go to a commercial and help them. Maybe the pricing was not accurate. Maybe we have an increase in, in, in our costs, in our suppliers' costs, that the team has not reflected in an increase in, 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 in prices. Or maybe they haven't coped up with this. Making us reach, for example, from a, from a profitable level, from a margin level of 10% to 2%, just because management didn't speak to each other or departments didn't speak to each other. And this is where my function is. I'll, I'll walk you through it in the next phase as well. Um, as I as I'm also showing in this in this uh, in this slide, long-term planning and annual budget, as well as reforecasting, I'll touch base on reforecasting, um, is an annual is a, is a is a planning tool. The management accounts and performance review. This is a reporting tool, where management get to share their feedback and their inputs and their uh, their knowledge in terms of how do we get to our goal. And the execution part and the executing part. This is the PMO. This is your day-to-day -day work. This is to your week in, week out. So you wouldn't lose track on anything because the person who sets up the budget and knows what is the annual five years, one year, and also knows what to deliver will exactly know what went wrong. We built things, as I mentioned, bottom up. 
when if something went wrong in maintenance team or or if something went wrong with 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 operation, I will know what went wrong. I built it bottom up. If you staffed, if you overstaffed and you're underutilizing your staff, I will be able to know because I've I've set it on a certain metric or a certain KPI which we're performing under. This is where we go to leadership. This is where we go to operation with the leadership guidance. This is what you have to do, one, two, three. And we, this is where we conceptualize. And this is where we make our plans. And this is where we think outside the box. We problem solve. We think, we, how can we do it? We cannot, for example, go and fire 10 people or 15 people or 50 people just because revenue didn't come. We have to think about ways to sustain their work and as well sustain our profitability. This is when you start moving. I'll explain this in the financial modeling because I've taken an actual example. Um, I'll just go to for reforecasting. What if the budget was too smooth? Or what, mm-hmm. for example, in COVID, what happens when the budget is set at a certain target, but COVID hits? Do you, do you think, oh, I don't believe, and, and this is why reforecasting is very important. Uh, what if things went really bad? Do you want to hold your your team accountable for something that's outside their control? Or to economy, to anything, any external economy factor outside of our control. This is where reforecasting happens. Reforecasting is the bridge between the annual targets that we have set and our actual performance. We don't want the whole team to lose hope that we're not going to get our targets due to anything. Maybe we over budgeted. Maybe maybe we under budgeted sometimes. Reforecasting keeps you connect connects the full process back to the long term and back to the annual budget. Uh, a reforecasting happens usually on quarterly basis. After we finish a quarter, let's say we were, if, if, if for, 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 in a good example, we overachieved by 20%. Do you want everyone to be relaxed that uh, we're getting the targets anyway? No, we want them to be recharged as well. This is where you reset your, your targets at a reforecasted figure that speaks back to annual budget in case of a de- defic- uh, in case of a deficit and recharges them in case of a surplus this is where you link it to a uh, higher compensation bonus schemes or whatever in order to keep everyone intact there is this drawing that explains the full cycle i'll go quickly over it your long term your long term plan starts usually 3 usually 3 to eight, 6 months before the year ends you set up your long term target your long term plan then you start you you take it the uh, the the top down approach and make it a budget once you set the budget and gives it to every, give it to every division head then this is where you work with them to achieve it jan feb march up until all year whatever you require to 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 reforecast you can choose to reforecast from q3 till the end of the year or for one quarter from six from from the half year till the end of the year or for a quarter ahead and once you close the loop on the year end closing, this is where you look back and get all the learnings that you've had. By the time you want to start your long-term budget or your annual budget, you have nine months or six months worth of data that makes you refresh your annual budget and makes you refresh your five years plan. Not drastically, but just mm-hmm. refreshes on it. Quite similar to rolling budgets, going beyond yes. budgeting, right? So you're not being yes. very rigid and inflexible saying, that's the plan, we stick to it. But there can be new opportunities arising and like you said, there could be a COVID, there could be X factors, changing in the market conditions, supply increasing the prices. Inflation has been a great problem over the last couple of years. Food is not an exception. Food has been affected by it. With industries like F&B or retail for that matter, the biggest issue uh, we see in, in, in these markets or verticals is that you have to take a hit when the cost goes up. But it's not so easy to transfer all those higher costs onto the customers in the form of higher prices, simply because there's so much of competition uh, in the market. There are so many options in the market. So not every price increase is easy to pass on uh, to the customer. Just being a little mindful of the time here, Bilal, and I'm finding this very, very interesting actually. And I hope the audience here is also getting to learn and and enjoy it at the same time, uh, because this is going to, uh, help you imagine and dream what all can be done uh, within our careers. You're not restricted uh, to just do one sort of task or one sort of job all your life. We are capable of doing much, much more. It's just that you got to get out of your comfort zones and try something out with it. True. So if you can just show something from your work, like you mentioned earlier about some of the financial modeling, some of the formulas which you've been using, I'm sure our audience is going to love it. 
Sure, I'll, I'll quickly walk you through it. A finan what's, the, what's the difference between financial analysis and scenario modeling? Financial analysis is you look back and analyze what has happened. Scenario modeling is taking what you've learned from the financial analysis and the actuals and for the, forming them into a future plan. I'll walk you through one of the things, I'll walk you through a couple of the things that you have. I know this is not a very appealing. I've actually taken it from one of the tools that we use. It's called Causal. This makes you compare what you see here is only 12 months. This is time series analysis. The time series analysis here, I can take this, compare it to how other markets are doing. If you see, I have my average order value. This is where I can see an increase and decrease every month. Uh, I can compare this to other markets. I can compare a specific branch in, a, in somewhere in Dubai to somewhere to another branch in Abu Dhabi and just check and, and analyze what's the purchasing power that I have. I, of course, I can uh, associate this with macroeconomic factors or macroeconomics as well as microeconomics as well. So this, is, this is covers financial analysis. Uh, another financial analysis that you see here, and that's the tools that we use, this is where and we go and check discount trends linked to revenue. We see multiple variables as well. Uh, what happens in one month that causes other correlations or other causations and, uh, and other implications on other, on other uh, lines? What I would want to cover, because financial analysis goes from the financial, where you go and do your debt, debt to uh, um, credit to debt ratio, this is where you go check your, uh, your, uh, your, quick, uh, your quick ratio, your current ratio, all of these financial statement level. What I would want to explain here is uh, scenario modeling. Scenario modeling is what I do believe is one of the most interesting things we do. I'll quickly explain the thing you see. This is actually taken as a screenshot from one of the models I'm working on. I only changed the currency and I did a divided here so because numbers are a bit confidential. Um, so everything you see here is actually made up number, but the process itself. What you see here is a full branch by branch PNL. This is, if you see the, every single tab here in orange is a separate tab. We have more than one of the, I look after more than 80, 72, 78 uh, branches. How do I know how all of these would fall? Or maybe um, one of the models that we do, what happens if we decide to shut down an asset and move everything else somewhere else? Does, it, does this become profitable for us? Yes or no? Uh, if you see, this is also one of the models I work on. This is a specific kitchen. This is a specific asset where I go and change all the inputs at the and every financial statement line you see here has an assumption downstairs. This is where I go and check if I increase my food cost, for example, or I increase my marketing, what would happen to the overall PNL? This is where this gets read in, in an overall spam. This is one of the most interesting projects I've been working on ever since I joined Kitopi. This is my fifth time using this model. Every single time it proves how efficient that this gives you. Not only if you see the red, the, the red highlights here, this gives you which exact brand in which location is making you lose money and which ones are making you make money. And based on that, we make decisions. When I said one of the most interesting things about FPNA is that you're involved in every single thing. Now I understand what a kitchen looks like in my in my industry and how can I utilize it. So this is just a brief explanation of how one of the things that we do is that financial modeling with scenarios. Let's move this brand to this location and see what happens to the financial. And that's a direct impact. Um, this and, and of course, once you do all of this, you'll have, and th that's what I said, our models becomes our PMO, our models becomes our drive to our daily tasks. Every decision that we make and model here becomes a PMO. This, is, uh, this becomes the PMO factor here. This is where we allocate a specific branch to a process owner, to an action, to a dollar value associated to that action or a specific cost with a start date and the overall completion. And this is what we do day in, day out. Some tasks, sometimes I'll just do the full model, make, make it, take, take it to operation and the operation takes it forward. I will not be able to do any of the things I'm explaining and what makes my life a, be, a very uh, easy task or what, what tools I use are these formulas you see here. I tried to conclude them or make them, put them all in one tab. I'm pretty sure that anyone who works in accounting are familiar with many of these. I'm also pretty sure that many professionals do not deal with these tools. I was fortunate enough to have people to teach me what formulas to use it where. I'll come up with one of these formulas. A guy was sitting next to me and he was like, You've, I've seen you for the past five minutes trying to do it. Here's the formula, saves your tape. So this is one of the formulas I, all of these formulas, I use them on, let's say, at least some of them on daily basis, others 
less frequent, all of them are useful. I've put them here just in case someone would want to have a screenshot of it or I can share the uh, share it after. I'm being very cautious of time, so I just want to uh, go to the next uh, topic. I'll just cover it briefly. Um, I, do we have time, Saha? I think I've. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, people are sticking with us, so it seems they are enjoying it. Uh, I don't mind to. it if if they are fine, unless our audience feels that uh, you know we, do we have. Need to do we ask here. them to annotate? Do we ask but them to I, I annotate, can, I, or how do we do it? Yeah, yeah, I can see they're all they're all they're all here with us. Nobody's really uh, left, so I think they're really enjoying it. And you know, when you when you're showing me all these sheets, it's just taking me to the times you know prior to me joining the training. When I was working uh, in the industry, mm -hmm. when I was working in private equity, it was so yeah. nice. I mean, I, I I wish I could use this platform to thank all those heroes, uncapped heroes, uh, who was kind enough to always, you know, approach you directly and say, "Listen, I've noticed you're taking a lot of time. How about you do this?" And there you go. They are your teachers. They are your mentors. They are your work buddies. Um, we actually learn a lot from people than we learn from books. True. People teach you more than what books do. So True. I'm I'm very happy to see here that our audience has already started giving us feedback in the middle of the webinar itself that they are really enjoying it. I'm enjoying it as well, Bilal. Um, Thank you. So I'm sure there's a lot lot to learn from each other. And I say this every time in our classrooms also that the one the one and only reason why I don't like online classes and the one and only major reason why i like face to face classes is because i want people to interact we want people to interact with each other ask where do you work what do you do how do you do it because that is the best way we can learn um, so i'm so grateful for you you know to you to, for taking out the time and sharing this with our with our audience i'm i'm very thankful to you for this um now, what you have discussed primarily so far uh, is hardcore technical stuff. Yes. And we learn this by doing it. So yes. all those formulas, if you don't do it for the next six months or so, you may end up forgetting it. True. Uh, like how I have forgotten some of them. Um, which means I need to sometimes go into my old files, take them out and see what work I used to do in the past. Yeah. But also what is more important in along with the skills, the technical skills, which people can learn, watch a video here and there, ask a friend, speak to a colleague and learn it quick. True. Soft skills are equally important. So based on your experience, what is your understanding? How do soft skills help us in our careers and our growth? Sure. Uh, I Let me anchor on something. Uh, I'm, I'm humble enough to say that I'm not the best person who uses Excel. I wasn't the best auditor out there. I'm pretty sure I'm not the best FP&A person out there. But I'll tell you, I honestly, I, I go by everything I've mentioned here. And one of the things that makes me have a fast track career is that I anchor on all of these things. I'll, I'll start with discipline. And that's one of the things I've learned throughout my life as well i took it as as well to work i'm always there on time i'm very punctual when it comes to when i when, when i mention discipline that's everything i attend my calls whenever i can two minutes before and literally i do this every day i always get the comments you're always the first to join um with every single meeting i'll be there on time after we finish most of the meetings i'll send meeting minutes whenever I, it's very related to me after i do everything if, if there's something that i do not understand i'm not afraid of going to a person and telling him listen please repeat and this is where it takes me from discipline to learning attitude i've went to multiple per to multiple people up until now i go to the strategy guy in our company i'll tell him listen i don't know how to do this formula it's a very complex formula i want you to help me do it um having a very learning attitude a very positive learning attitude makes you makes people want to invest in you I've had a lot of managers throughout my my time in PwC and Deloitte who would, would invest in me because they see that I have a positive learning attitude that they can uh, benefit of uh, on the long term. Interpersonal skills. I can see one of my colleagues who I actually worked with, and I think is, uh, I can see his name also Taha. He, he was also one of your students as well, Ismail Amrani. Uh, honestly, he's one of the guys who happened to cross my mind when I mentioned interpersonal skills. I worked with him in two companies, was about to become third uh, in three companies. Um, make friends, honestly, try to be, try to like the people you, you work with. I'm a very social person. This is one of the things that makes me uh, actually love going to office whenever I go. I like working with people. I like building relationships with them. 
and a lot of a lot of them uh, i set the budget for them and they give them hard time when they don't stick to it but just because of my relationship was with them they make my life easy whenever i require any data and any sets of data a third th- a fourth point that i just want to mention uh, personal goal one of the things that makes me always refreshed is that i always want to see what do i want to achieve and that's something one of my my director always put, puts you know, he, he likes to always anchor on it is what you're doing aligned with your personal goals? And I've actually learned this from him. He keeps on anchoring on this point. He was like, if you're not doing what you want to be doing in the next couple of years, you're doing something wrong. Maybe you, you need the money. Maybe you need you can't afford to have a luxury to do any career shift or, one, or, or, or whatever. Maybe you can't afford to go somewhere else and get a lower pay and have, have a fresh start. But always align anything you do with your personal goal. Do not, there are some circumstances where we are pushed be uh, uh, like away from our track and we lose camp uh, com- we lose the compass of what we actually do but in case you have the luxury and you have the option to to always align yourself what you're doing with what you need to do please do it um work ethics is very important i'll just go very quickly on it uh, this is goes back to discipline but what i would want to just take one minute to 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 uh, to, to to highlight uh i've been i felt burned out twice in my life I could stress takes the best of me. I'm I, I'm an overthinker, so stress really hits me. One of the things I I I, I mentioned I I put this here. Please be a better person in in, in managing your stress than me. I, I sometimes I'll actually wake up. I used to wake up at 2 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning thinking about a formula that I messed up, or I'll think about something that I so I submitted a budget and literally three days after I rem- I noticed that I did something wrong. It gets to the best of me. If you can manage stress even better the way than the way I'm managing it, you'll be really happy. That's one of the things I could, I personally try to work on. I'll disconnect after 6 p.m. or I'll disconnect after 7 p.m. I won't open my laptop, and that's something that I would anchor on every single day. That's that's the that's the, the dream killer. If you can if you can manage this, you can manage everything else. Um, Taha, I, I'm, I'm very cautious of time as well. So if you want to start getting any of the Q&As. Yeah, uh... I think we can straight away jump into the Q&As. I think we have a very nice question that what is your zodiac sign? I think you're referring oh. to the zodiac sign here. <laughs> Unless you're, I mean, only if you're comfortable. Uh, of course, man, it. of course. Uh, I'm, I'm a Virgo. I don't know if this helps in any way. That, not that I understand <laughs> anything in them, but I'm, I'm a Virgo. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think Najwa herself is also a Virgo. I think that, because when she says OMG, then I'm sure the next message would be a C. She's Virgo too. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Um, now, um, I mean, we, we are going towards Q&A, guys. But in the meanwhile, we'll still be talking. Uh, you can just move on Strike. to the next uh, you know, set of slides and I'll pose sure. these questions to you. Sure. Um, um so you can see some you can just move keep moving on every five seconds bilal like okay. because i think i'm just going to very give all our audience a brief overview about it so as i sure. mentioned earlier we are present in the region uh we are closely working with uh, some of the government and the corporate clients helping them bridge the training gap um or upskill or move into different skill sets as the markets change um, we offer various qualifications. But if you can just move on to the next one, the next to next one, because that will have the list of, yeah, the list of all the qualifications which we offer. My colleague is also one of the panelists here. So in case you have any questions for any of the qualifications here or how else we can support you to make you more employable, to make you more free when it comes to career choices, opening more doors to opportunities, we would love to do that because I think as a trainer, as an educationist, that is what our role is. I'm so happy to actually see this when Bilal was going through all of that. I could actually pick and choose how a lot of this comes from so many of the papers which we teach in our classrooms. When you say time series analysis, that's management accounting, that's performance management. When you say budgeting, that's performance management. When you say ratio analysis and financial analysis, again, you see a lot of uh, you know things on other areas and other papers, all papers of the ACCA qualification and other qualifications for that matter have the information too. Next slide, Bilal, please. Sure. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. So these are our partners. We work closely with these. We are also providing the financial modeling uh, qualification now. Uh, we are accredited by the FMI, which is the only financial modeling institute. 
uh, and the course is called AFM, Advanced Financial Modeling. So we are also providing uh, this qualification now. We are also offering diplomas in VAT and CIT. I think to some of our uh, new joiners, uh, CIT might be of interest to you because there's a lot of hype around tax. Uh, move on to the next one. This is this has been our track record. I don't think I'm going to boast about it, but you can just have a quick glance through it. Kaplan is old enough in the industry to showcase such numbers. I'm and one I, of these guys as well. I'm one I, of the hundred yes. percent here. For, uh, <laughs> I'm an ad, I'm I'm one of the live examples to their. Uh... <laughs> Absolutely. And I and I think we are very privileged. Personally, I would say I'm, I'm quite blessed to be part of such an organization. Um, so I just hope uh, people can prosper. Everybody uh, can prosper in their careers and be happy and settle down in their lives. Um, let's move on to the Q&A. So we have a question from Mariam. So if you can just go to the last slide now, uh, last oh, slide, which has the Q&A and, and the contact details also, if we can just move to the final sure, slide it's not uh, yeah okay give me no problems it's okay yes. so mariam has asked a question here that how can we get a job in dubai at an entry level in a good place because she's currently struggling she's asking about the vat and cit diplomas which i guess i have already answered that she's asking about are are the VAT and the CIT diplomas are online or they are offered through institutes? Okay, so I'll take the second part of the question first, Bilal here. Please. For, this is this has been asked by Mariam Sakrani. So Mariam, uh, are we offer both the modes of learning? So we offer face to face and we offer live online, and all our sessions are recorded, which means if you miss any session, you can always make up for it, and you get you get access to the recordings for a good number of months. So you can even watch it over the next couple of days. Um, so it is being offered and we at Kaplan are offering it. My colleague can send you out some more details. Now for your first question, which is about how to get a job at an entry level in a good place, I will move to Bilal. I'll let Bilal answer this. Uh, honestly, it's a, it's a very loose question because it, it all depends. Are you getting interview? Are you getting into interviews and you're not getting the job from the interview, or you're not getting interviews at all? Uh, there might be something. If so, it, it depends on the questions. It depends on the path. It, it's uh, uh, are you getting first thing? Uh, are you getting interviews? Yes or no? If not, then it might be uh, the there might be like few changes that we can make on on the C, on, on the resume itself to make it more appealing. Second thing, uh, the timing of applying. For example, if you've been applying in the months of December and January, usually people are on leave. Uh, this is where like people companies do not prefer to hire. Usually people prefer to hire once the budget is closed, which is closer to September, October. November, because usually people go, go and leave on these months. Uh, so that's also a matter of timing. Third thing is that uh, also as where are you searching? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll give you one honest uh, um, way that one of my dearest friends usually get uh, res uh, uh, um, interviews. She, uh, she's part, she, she, she subscribed in uh, LinkedIn Premium. LinkedIn Premium allows you to, uh, to apply to jobs. Only, YouTube, only um, LinkedIn Premium uh, subscribers uh, can apply to. It, it, this method worked for her, and um, uh, and keep, she keeps endorsing this every time. So there are multiple ways. I, I, you can reach out to me through my through my LinkedIn. Uh, I can ex I can have a one on one with you just to to understand it because it just I don't want to give you a broad answer that doesn't suit your case. Uh, yeah. So um, please reach out to me on LinkedIn whenever I'm free in the next couple of days. I'll reach out to you. We can chat about it. Totally agree there with you, Bilal. There's no one size fits all approach. There's no one right way of doing it, and and it's so it's so very important to to know the beat of the market. So where are the opportunities? Connecting yourself with the right set of people, be part of the right groups on WhatsApps. Majority of the groups on WhatsApps are just forwards. So they by the time you the job opportunity reaches you, it might have been filled already, uh, but Platforms like LinkedIn, they directly connect you with the employer or with the HR. So it is True. so very important to be connected with the right set of people. Strike a communication, a conversation with them. 
write about things of interest to you let people know what your areas of expertise is i know you might be thinking i don't want to show off but this is not a show off this is in fact you're being very noble here that you are sharing with the world about your knowledge things which you have researched on and you're sharing it with the rest of the people and this generates interest amongst recruiters that you are someone who is actually willing to exhibit and showcase the world you're a perfect brand for that company so if you join a firm next they know that you're going to talk about your work which the clients are going to read about and they will be interested to know more about you we are all sales we are all marketing people we are all sales people we it's just that we sell different things we sell different tasks but you've just got to know how to sell it to an employer that if you recruit me uh it's not just about the work but it's the soft skills it's so much else which comes around it and of course we 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 need luck uh, at our end as well for such opportunities but keep trying and uh, please don't feel disheartened if because i i know you've mentioned you're struggling but just don't give up keep trying and we will also try for you if something comes up um yakba has asked how can we connect with bilal so i think all the candidates who have joined this webinar if you go to the link which kaplan had sent you out initially the linkedin profile of bilal is mentioned there so if you click on that linkedin logo it will straight away take you to bilal's profile and bilal is going to have more followers and more connections today <laughs> <laughs> thanks to you as well for announcing it as no, well no, 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 no no i mean i mean that was said in a joking way but <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. your 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 net worth is your network that's uh, that it's very important guys that we we are in the right group of people we are in the right because when you're in the right group of people your value appreciates if you're not in the right group of people you'll be just like any other qualified individual and i was having this conversation in the morning with some of our candidates and they were expressing their concern that there are too many people who are qualified out there in the market i'm like this should be the last thing crossing your head let there be 1 million people who are qualified there are 1 million engineers out there there are a billion doctors out there but there are a few people who will always stand out be amongst the few people be amongst those few ones where you have a premium and you demand a premium because the way you do things is different so that's very important and that's can only be developed over time okay. um abdul ghafoor has asked a question that what is the best certificate if i want to switch my career in fp and a i'm currently acca qualified now bilal i will let you answer this but to my understanding you do not need a qualification for fp and a acca itself is good enough for this i mean and i'll let you take it from here if sure. you know of something sure there much. is additional honestly from what i have seen fpna is not uh, is not a division that is safeguarding credentials or or certificates uh, most of the people even in fpna Uh, some of them would have CFA, others would have CPA, others wouldn't have anything at all. One of the things that makes you, I think, if you want to, of course, the FMVA, uh, the, the I think also uh, Taha, you have also one of the financial modeling uh, yes. courses FMVA, as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All of these are pluses, not essentials. What would make mm-hmm. you a good? What? Yeah. Honestly, even if you check the job descriptions, uh, any FPNA. one of the things that companies would 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 anchor on is um power bi and another another tool which is tableau uh these two tools are very are used in companies left right and center specifically power bi and tableau just recently a lot of companies started adopting the the tool if you have knowledge in this just mentioning it in your resume on your linkedin profile makes you more um uh makes you a better fit mm-hmm. because you're going to use the tool that the people use there also and the, the, some of the formulas i mentioned as well but how can you prove this there's something called my sql this is a programming language that i have no knowledge in it at, at all but i have seen a lot of companies that reach out to me or even companies that i used to apply to my sql is a language that makes you a very potential high le- high high caliber candidate to anyone who works in fpna because not only you're going to use formulas you're going to write your own formulas and that's something that exceeds excel and microsoft and my and google sheets uh you, don't get me wrong they're very 80% of your work will go there 
but the 20 percent that some recruiters are looking for are in these tools I, I i personally use power bi but i um i know a lot of a lot of opportunities came my way where they're looking for someone who knows my sql or um or knows tableau so and that's something that you're gonna benefit of. Instead of just getting uh, certificates are important, but I think what's more right. important are the tools that you're gonna use in FPA. And mm -hmm. you don't require ACCA is is good enough. And as Taha mentioned, you already know many of the things that you already studied many of the things that you'll be working on. Yep, yep. Great, uh, Marim. You've asked about the MSc in professional accountancy from the UOL. Uh, so yes, Kaplan is approved training provider for the MSc as well. I'm sorry you did not see that in the slide. Uh, I think we have not mentioned it there, uh, but yes, it is. And we have already started a batch. I think the first session is sometime this week. So as you can find uh, my colleague Nandini's details on the screen, uh, so you can get directly in touch with her and all those questions about the VAT, CIT program, uh, AFM, if anyone of you is willing to, I'm going to be sitting for the AFM uh, in the next batch, Bilal, because I think I need to brush through it. So I want to use that as an opportunity to brush through it. So in case anybody wants to, if you're not in practice mode right now and you want to go through all the financial modeling, scenario planning and doing all those LBOs and MBOs and making all those scenarios. So why not? You can inquire about it. Um, just one more minute and then we will be ending the webinar. Um, if there is any more questions, it's been a very engaging one. I again want to extend my thank you to Bilal, who's actually taken out time uh, from his very busy schedule. Um, yes, totally agreed there. He's a great speaker and he's, he's explained things really well. Perhaps Bilal, we can also try and get you into training. I, I, I told you, and I told you even on a personal note, I have a retirement plan, which is to become a, an, a, an institute. I like, I want to be a, a tutor. So that's maybe one, of, but, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, I can start before that, before my retirement plan. Yeah, Whenever something you on, a, on, a, on, on something on part-time, perhaps on weekends. I'd or, love to, honestly, uh, honestly, I'd love if, to. I wouldn't say if no. the uh, missus, if the missus permits. It's the missus is the one who says the missus is the one who just gave me the, the good praise. Believe the best speaker you can get, that's my wife. I think she blesses the, your idea as well. Great, great. Thank you so much. I think uh, people are done with their questions. This session is recorded. The recording will be shared with all of you. You'll just have to be a little patient. Uh, after some time, you will uh, perhaps tomorrow morning, you will get an email which will have the recording as well. So please share the word. Uh, don't let knowledge stop here. Please keep spreading and sharing. We don't realize that knowledge grows when you start you know, sh spreading it. So uh, you don't have to hold on to it. You don't have to keep it with you. Just share as much as you can. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today, taking time out of your busy work schedule. Um, thank you very much.